Recently I bought these two GPS modules. This one is called GY Neo 6M version 2 and sets you back about $7. It comes with a U-Block 6M module and an antenna. According to this label, the other module is called Neo 6M GPS and sets you back about only $3. In my case it came with a U-Block 6Q module and also with an antenna. If you take a very close look at the module, you can easily see that the U-Block 6Q module has already been used before. If you look the product up, for example on AliExpress, most stores also add the information to the product description that the U-Blocks module has been used before. So this is an actual recycling product. However, I guess the breakout board and the antenna are new. Interestingly, I got a U-Block 6Q module. According to many customer reviews, the majority gets U-Block 6M modules. Anyways, these U-Block modules are very comparable. The main difference is that the 6M features a crystal oscillator and the 6Q features a TXCO oscillator. Both U-Block modules need a voltage supply at 3.3V. Fortunately, both breakout boards have a voltage regulator, so they don't blow up if you have a voltage supply of 5V and therefore they can be perfectly used with an Arduino Uno. Okay, so for today I want to field test these two GPS modules. One main purpose of a field test is to evaluate something under real-world conditions. In comparison to, for example, testing something in a laboratory environment, many influencing factors can't be controlled. Therefore, the today's test is a little bit unscientific. So I want to find out if the $3 module has any major drawbacks compared to the $7 module. Therefore I will go for a walk and test them. I'm fully aware that many factors such as the antenna influence the performance of such GPS modules. I'm also aware that you can fine tune these modules to get a better performance. But today I want to test them just in the state they arrived. As I said before, the test will be very unscientific. For example, in a scientific test setup, you do multiple tests in order to compensate if one of the modules just had a bad day. Moreover, I will evaluate them purely subjectively by a visual analysis, because I just want to know if I can use both modules for simple private projects. And therefore, this kind of evaluation is sufficient to me. Here you can see how I built up the test setup. I used an Arduino Nano in combination with a very handy shield. First I added an LCD display module in order to show debug messages while I'm field testing. Then I connected the $7 module and the $3 module to the Arduino. In my program in order to retrieve the GPS coordinates I used the well-known tiny GPS library. Lastly I added a SD card module. I store the GPS coordinates as GPX files on a SD card. GPX stands for GPS Exchange Format and is an XML-based data format for GPS data. The advantage is that there exists a wide variety of tools, for example for visualization, that work with this format. And this is the test vehicle of today's field test, a simple baby buggy. The reason for taking the baby buggy with me is that I need someone who oversees the field test. So I take my son with me. He will observe the whole procedure and watch out that no one illegally influences the field test. As you can see here, I place the GPS setup at the lower part of the buggy. So our journey starts. On our journey we will meet several test conditions. Village, fields and forest. Now we leave the first village and enter the fields. As you can see both modules are doing fine. In the first curve the $3 GPS gets a bit of drag as it does not receive a signal but it's still okay. Both modules are doing fine up the hill towards the next village. Shortly after we enter the village, the $3 modules does not get a signal anymore. Here I have to say that this is a very very small village. 
Therefore, the few houses should not interfere with the GPS signal too much. The $3 module still does not receive a signal. But as soon as we enter the fields, it is on track again. And now we walk along the fields for a little bit longer time. Next we enter a small forest and as you can see the free dollar module lost the signal again. And then we enter the first village again and both modules are doing fine. Especially the free dollar module works very well here. And at the end of our journey, the $3 module performs better, as the $7 module loses the signal and does not perfectly resemble the last bend to the right. As we arrived at our destination, it's time for a short summary. When judging both modules, we have to keep in mind that both are really very low cost modules, so the prices include all the shipping from Asia to Europe. Moreover, I did not optimize anything. I just took them, wired them, wrote a simple program and that's about it. In my opinion the $7 module did a job very well. Only once it got a little bit off track. Unfortunately the $3 module got off track multiple times. But in my opinion it did a job also very well when considering the very very low price. I guess for the majority of my future projects the $3 module will fulfill all the requirements. But here I want to add that the $3 modules might vary in quality as the U-Blox modules were probably scraped from other devices. So I hope you enjoyed this field test, which was maybe a bit unscientific and uncontrolled, but hopefully also a little bit enlightening.